So, Popo's Bizarre Adventures. <laughs> uh, so, where should we start? Should we start at the top in the last week or so? The absolute shit show that has been the Ovalde Police Department. I can say that, unfortunately, San Jose has not been in the news again. My boys, San Jose, um, they they have managed not to whip their dicks out and masturbate in front of a grieving mother uh, for, for th- like, more than three minutes at a time. So congratulations, I suppose, at the top of the show. Congratulations to the San Jose Police Department for managing to go two weeks without driving drunk on the freeway, showing up to, to a domestic violence call and rubbing one out while drunk, showing up to a kidnapping of a young, uh, a three-month-old boy, f- a baby boy, and masturbating in the other room. So congratulations to the San... Or, or stealing drugs from a crime scene and ODing on the fentanyl you thought was cocaine. So congratulations to the San Jose Police Department for managing to stay off of my Popo's Bizarre Adventures radar for two weeks. That is a string. They were going for like five weeks straight. Every fucking week, San Jose Police Department was putting up numbers. So congratulations, San Jose Police Department, for not managing to not masturbate at a crime scene for a week or two. Shocking. Shocking, I know. Um, so, but in that time, what, uh, what has happened was... Um, what has happened is, of course, the Ovalde Police Department. Um, the Ovalde Police Department, of course, infamously at this point, I, I suppose, they, I think Ovalde is going to go down as, um, you know, a, a word, a term in our society. I think that Ovalde will be, uh, <laughs> they didn't master it because I knew I was watching. Uh, I think Ovalde is going to be a buzzword uh, for a while in our culture, in our society. Um, for for posterity, for the record, uh, a disgruntled, mentally unwell um, kid fucking gets a couple of ARs, fucking goes on a high speed chase with cops, manages to fucking wreck his vehicle, manages to run a half a mile to a fucking school, goes in the school, goes on a shooting rampage, 19 kids, two teachers, and the entire time the police department is standing out front for 78 minutes. And the only thing the police department actually did was pepper spray, tase, and handcuff parents who wanted to attempt to save their own children, in which several par- uh, several people did. Several cops actually went in and saved their own fucking kids. One of the women who went in and saved her own child happened to be on probation from a previous event, and the police department threatened her with uh, pulling her probation, uh, probation jacket on her um, if she spoke to the press. Um, so the only thing the police department has done in Uvalde, as far as we can tell, is pepper sp- has beat up a bunch of parents who wanted to uh, try and save their kids from a mass shooting event, save their own kids, cover their own asses. Oh, and the uh, squad leader, the, the police chief who was in charge of that shit show, has been secretly uh, sworn in as a city council member at night with no press or no public uh, available uh, or allowed in at that time. The police department has assured us that they definitely didn't shoot or harm any other kids, which they definitely did. Um, and then the next day, they announced that they would not be cooperating with Texas Department of Public Safety or federal DOJ uh, investigations. Um, so that basically, I think, summarizes uh, the Ovalde police debacle at this point, having done more heavy lifting for the anti-police, uh, abolish police, anarchist view on police um, than we have ever managed to accomplish for ourselves uh, in one incident. So, I mean, you know, thank you, I suppose, Uvalde. Um, you definitely have proven exactly why police are not only useless to society, but a net negative to society at this point. Keep up the terrible work, I guess. 
Um, so moving on from Uvalde, <clears throat> <laughs> they need to take a moment, a pause for a moment to bait from all that excitement. I know, right? San, is there, are there former San Jose police on the Ovalde Police Department? Did they need a minute to rub one out? Um, congrats to the cops for winning the war on cops. Yep. Um, the, this is why I'm an anarchist. The cops don't do anything. Actually, Latte, that is incorrect. The cops actively did things. They tased parents, they pepper sprayed parents, they handcuffed parents, and they generally used the monop monopolization that the, uh, of force that is empowered by the state and give, uh, they are, uh, uh, that is collected by the state and empowered in them to generally allow the shooter to continue for 78 minutes unabated. So the cops didn't do the, the cops didn't do nothing. They just actively prevented any good from being done and actively caused further harm. <laughs> yeah, oh, that's right. Congrats on them for doing a thing. So, yes. Um, so we will, uh, you know, that's that's pretty much, we'll be, um, we'll be checking back in with Uvalde, I'm sure, as time goes on. Um, <clears throat> they... Definitely are worth our time, I suppose. Uh, <laughs> they already have, yeah, they have me too, actually, to a certain extent. Now, um, jumping, uh, jumping from Uvalde, Texas, uh, across the pond, the Met, the origin of modern policing in the Western world, the Metropolitan Police Force of London. This is this is the the spawn point, as it were, for many of our problems. Um, for those of you who have done a few Popo's bizarre, bizarre Adventures, you probably are, you, you may or may not remember whether you've, you've managed to kill those brain cells with alcohol or just brute force banging a hammer into your head yet or not. Um, you may or may not remember the um, young, uh, young woman who was raped um, at school by the Metropolitan Police Force uh, in, in the course of a strip search for reasons they, they strip searched her and, you know, sexually molested her for reasons. Um, <clears throat> well, the Metropolitan Police Force is um, being investigated again for the strip search of a third child now. Um, just, just, just recently. They did it again. Um, there was already two, uh, there was already two incidents of, shall we say it, controversial cases in which children were strip searched by the Met. Well, now we have a third incident. On Monday, the Independent Office of Pol for Police Conduct in the Met confirmed following complaint. They are investigating the strip search of a child. Due to the sensitive uh, sensitivity surrounding the matter, they were unable to provide any further information at this time. They would confirm that the strip search was conducted by officers of the same gender. I don't know why that matters, that they were, you know, molested by the police force in an official capacity at the behest of the state. The, the, the gender is the same gender, at least. Hey, yes, the state raped your child. Um, but don't worry, the rape was conducted by somebody of the same gender. So it's OK. I don't quite understand how that works, but whatever. Um, they took the, the child in on a uh, suspicion uh, of possession with intent to uh, supply, of course. Um, <clears throat> the child, uh, let's see, that's that's child Q. That's a different case. Um, then there's the autistic child who was 15, who was strip searched in front of male officers. Um, so, yeah, we don't know anything. The cat, the cop, the cop was Catholic, so it was okay. Exactly. Whether. Um, so this is all we know at this point. It's still a breaking story. Um, we, you know, we're just going to have to wait. But some, oh, I need to, there we go. Oh, some uh, some Metropolitan Police Force officer has once again fucking raped a kid. Uh, so Leona Hale. Leona Hale. Like, we didn't get an opportunity to really talk about Leona Hale. Leona Hale was the 26-year-old Kansas City woman who was shot, 
hands up, unarmed, um, pregnant by the Kansas City Police Department. Um, they maintain that she may or may not have you know, been related to an, uh, a fucking, an incident of, uh, like carjacking or something like that. Um, but as far as all we know, based off the footage at the scene and the, um, the, uh, the, the, uh, uh, the eyewitness account statements at the, uh, at the scene, they, um, shot her while she was fleeing hands up pregnant. So yeah, I, I, I mean, what do you want? It's an unarmed pregnant woman. They fucking shot her like five times. I, I can't, there's not much more I can do with this, right? Like she, she's a fucking pregnant woman who was shot five times by fucking Kansas city police officers while she, you know, like tried to get away. So, take your fucking pick. Pro-life, exactly. Pro-life. <clears throat> so, cops in Arizona watched a dude drown. Cops in Arizona watched a dude drown. They fucking, they, I mean, that's, that's sort of the beginning, middle and end of the story. <clears throat> I mean, it was in Tempe, Arizona. A uh, dude fucking ran out, you know, dude ran out in the water fucking and like he, he drowned. Like they, they're on administrative leave. Um, the fucking victim said, I'm drowning. The cops stood by and did nothing. Uh, the, like, uh, like the transcript is very clear. The first officer literally told the guy, I'm not jumping in after you. So like when the wife lost her mind on the officers, he, the, the cops threatened to put, uh, put her in fucking cuffs and put her in the car. So yeah. Uh, the exact quote Marcus was Okay. I'm not jumping in after you. It was, it was straight up. I'm drowning. Come over to the pylon. I can't. Okay. I'm not coming. I'm not jumping in after you. And then when the wife lost her mind, the cop fucking turns to her and says, if you don't calm down, I'm going to put you in my car. So Google's can pigs swim. Uh, pigs can't swim. <laughs> Armed with a baby on board. Uh, yeah, they basically told the dude to go fuck himself. Uh, I, I, I don't know, like, you know, like, welcome to P Popo's Bizarre Adventures. We get these kind of stories where you just like, holy shit, that's the story? Yeah, that's the story. Cops in Tempe watched a fucking dude drown. They did not attempt to do anything. It was a... What do you mean? What was the environment, Glazy? It was a fucking pond. It was a murky, uh, muddy pond in fucking Arizona. It's just Jesus Christ! It's just fucking deja vu. Fucking Jesus Christ! You fucking bootlicked so many times. I'm getting deja vu from it. So these dipshits need lifeguard training now. Oh no, they're too fat and useless, dude. They, have you seen cops? There's no way cops can fucking swim. Jesus Christ! Like, I mean, have you seen these fucking just absolute like air? I could see them turtle style on their back. Like. They can't swim, but with all that fat, they can float. Piggy paddle, piggy paddle.
Oh, hey, I have a picture. Here, you want to... Glazy, you want to know the conditions? Here you go. Here's a picture from, uh, from the, 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 the lake. Okay, here. Here you go. You ready? Ready? Is this... Is this um, is this safe enough? Is this calm enough for the officers to actually get involved? Glazy, is this is this an acceptable set of variables for them to actually get off their fucking fat asses and do something? Or. Should we just start considering, um, oh yeah, it's an inland man-made lake, by the way. So definitely not a shark. Um, should we, I don't know, maybe consider just as human beings at this point? Is this, is this shallow enough? Is this, is this manageable enough that a, a, someone else would jump in because I know I would jump in there but I grew up swimming and have plenty of training in water born areas cops won't swim for you let alone die for you glazy it's in Tempe Arizona do you understand Tempe Arizona doesn't have no it's actually it's kind of a goofy question man it's like asking like what the water conditions at Lake Las Vegas was like. It's a man-made lake. It's a little weird. What were the what were the conditions at the at Lake Las Vegas the day that the, 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 they let him drown? I don't know. The same they are every other day. It's a fucking man-made lake. It's Tempe, Arizona. It's this is it's fucking here. It's glass. Uh yes. Uh uh Cassidy neither tried. Neither tried. Uh, oh, here's here here they are as well, just hanging out. Yeah, yeah. Can we get? Here you go. They did. They they literally just stood there and watched someone drown to death with her. Yes. They 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 very literally stood there and watched him drown. Here, here is a picture from the dude standing there at the fucking edge watching a man drown. You understand why if I, I don't see it as a fair question, Glazy? They just stood there and watched a man drown. What what amount of, like, if, if I threw your mom or your brother or your best friend in a fucking lake and they were drowning because they couldn't fucking swim, what amount of choppy water would you be okay with for me to just stand there and do nothing? Right? Forget that I tossed them in. Just, they're in there drowning. Like, if somebody was, like, just sitting there at the end of a dock, drowning, and... I stood there and just watched them drown. Your loved one. What degree of choppy water would would be acceptable? How how unsafe would it have to be before you okayed me letting your mom drown, Glazy? 
I'm serious, Glazy. If, if, if that was a fair question before, how is this not a fair question? What degree of... They, they watched a dude drown. You, what the fuck kind of people just stand there? That's the most fucked up shit ever, says Cassie. Exactly. Like, I don't understand, like, what... I don't understand how they get the benefit of the doubt for, like, watching a dude drown. By the way, you see the casual arms there? You see him just leaning over the fucking pole watching this dude slowly drown? You know you don't drown instantly, right? Like, you know... it. It's not. They watched a dude drown. Oh, this should be fun. I'm sure this will uh, also get the benefit of the doubt. What training, Marcus? Because, I mean, like, I have, like, some SAR stuff under my belt. Like, at, part of it is to literally jump in after a drowning person. Like, what training taught you not to save a drowning person? It's painful and scary to drown. Yeah. <clears throat> um, so let's jump across the pond again. Let's go say hi to our British counterparts. Once more. Who the fuck trains you, Marcus? That's the whole point of a lifeguard. You notice they close the door when they get caught. Oh shit, we're being recorded. Oh shit. Yeah. Just kick this shit out of an old black dude. Just kick this shit out of an old black dude. Yeah. Yeah, that's beast. That was that was my training as well. Um, fucking you, you hook them from behind. You don't don't ever let them get in front of. You. Uh, don't ever let them get behind you. Um, I know, right? YMCA and Boy Scouts were told to get a tool for them to grab onto and drag them to shore. Oh Jesus! Yeah, you just don't ever let them uh, let them get in, uh, get behind you. You always grab them from behind, like usually across the chest, under an arm, and across the chest, and fucking you know drag that way. Um, interesting. Yeah, dude, I, I see. Cause yeah, Cassie, I don't have that like community pool fucking lifeguard training. I've got like, um, mountain, t um, uh, search and uh, search and rescue from, um, uh, mountain rescue, um, in Tennessee, like, uh, smoky mountain rescue is who taught me that shit. Um, so like, yeah, I guess like I skipped the lower levels. Somewhere along the way. And I, I, I desperately, like, that's my goal, by the way. Like, if I if I can rehab this body to the point where, <laughs> various, to that point, that's what I want to get back into, um, SAR. Um, I, I would love to be able to do some search and rescue stuff. That'd be great. Oh, all right. Um, okay, close that. 
Oh, we forgot to mention that that Texas law, um, the the dead suspect loophole um, thing in Texas may uh, may prevent families uh, the the families in Uvalde from ever actually like knowing the circumstances of the deaths. Um, fucking due to some bullshit Texas law. Just FYI, <laughs> like that's there's it's called the de- uh, the uh, dead suspect loophole uh, apparently. Um, oh yeah, and we forgot to mention that the police were using bikers, um, fucking motorcycle clubs, um, in Uvalde to like you know kick the shit out of people. Um, fuck Texas. Well, it is Texas, so Puka exactly. Yeah, to intimidate press. Hey, you're welcome, uh, video. Um, how, like, how would you hire a field officer that doesn't swim? I know, right? Build the wall, baby. Build the wall, Mississippi. Oh, Jesus. So Louisiana is getting a little more based. Louisiana has um, a proposal that would ban law enforcement from using the odor of cannabis as probable cause. Be nice. Now may be the worst time in recent history to fuck in Texas. Please <laughs> do not. Um, yeah, I know, right? So, you know, I, I mean, they're going to have to fucking pass it. So we don't know. But we'll see. Louisiana has been having some issues. Um, Louisiana has a few. Um, they're attempting to crack down on their problem cops. Uh, they've got like some Senate Bill 182. That would um, att- that would pre- uh, protect police whistleblowers from retaliation, and they say that it would help. Uh, it would attempt to uh, prevent uh, rogue rogue officers from escaping accountability, but I, it would revoke an officer's certification if the officer is fired or allowed to retire or resign as a result of being disciplined for an unreasonable use of force. I'll take that. I'll fucking take that. You know what? Like that's, you know, but again, Louisiana, you got to get it passed. You can't just fucking put it on the books. You got to actually get it passed. And when you have shit like, you know, how, uh, was it in, uh, Abbeville, um, a family trying to file a complaint against a police officer have like they're fearing uh, rampant retaliation against them by the police force. And so like, yeah, they're like physical abuse, like, you know, harassment, twisting the, um, you know, uh, father's, uh, father's arm and like body slamming him to the ground and injuring him in the process of harassing them. They fucking, they, they're literally just harassing them looking for like their 16 year old son. They, they have a suspect for a white suspect on a motorcycle. So it clearly was him and shit like that. It just it, general harassment campaigns that are conducted by police officers on a fairly relatively large scale. Um, let's see. <laughs> video we don't um you know, like all the other accountability policies in place not a policy issue it's an action issue yeah right video uh i'm sorry but i'm not that familiar with u.s politics which left wing organization is currently the strongest and the most successful successes impact <laughs> we don't have a we don't have a political left in the u.s no where where are you from video what part of the world yeah we don't we don't have a left here we have the Democrats, which are center right. And then we have the Republicans, which are right wing. Germany. We don't have the equivalent of what you would consider a leftist party here. Uh, video. Not not of any significant success. No. Uh, yes, it is, Bavarius. It is. Uh, essentially, yeah. Video, yeah. For, from your political perspective, if you're familiar with an Overton window... Um, from your political perspective, yes, all we have is right wing. <laughs> uh, Marcus, I mean, there is an actual report the, uh, by the uh, FBI um, about the um, about anarchists and how we're extraordinarily difficult to infiltrate. 
<laughs> most we have is the Canadian uh, Canada is the Communist Party of Canada, which supports Russia. Um, a one party state with two wings. Yeah, basically. Pfft, fuck the DSA. God, they are useless. <laughs> they are fucking useless. They're beyond useless. Um, yeah, Gord, yeah, DSA. Lol. It's like, come on. <laughs> fucking hate the DSA. Oh. The fuck is a DSA, says Rev. <laughs> So, <laughs> oh, <laughs> fuck it. <sighs> yes, weather the face. He got into an altercation over driving in a neighborhood. After the initial interaction, Snyder drove his privately owned vehicle to his residence and returned in his assigned unmarked police vehicle to the citizen's location. The situation escalated further and Snyder drew his firearm on the citizen. Through the course of the investigation, detectives determined that Snyder, this guy, violated the law and arrest warrant was issued. He surrendered to police and was booked into the C uh, CCDC, which is our detention center, uh, on two counts of assault with a deadly weapon and one count of oppression under color of law. He's been an LVMPD officer since 2016 and currently assigned to the Theft Crimes Bureau. He's going to be placed on suspension of police powers without pay pending confirmation of charges. <laughs> yeah, Las Vegas Metro. <laughs> LVMPD. Fucking, oh, he's, he's a, he's a special one. <laughs> Thanks, Wormy. Uh, <laughs> he looks like a cop. He is a cop. Why do all cops look alike? Because they're fucking, they, they filter. They self-filter. Break light committee or stomp out some words were so good for just say, why the fuck don't I have to do more of that? Because they're fucking idiots. Uh, fine, because I swear I've seen him before. I do business for a company that's next to a training facility. The cops are always there. I wouldn't doubt it, Dig. It's a small town. I, I wouldn't doubt it if you had seen him before. Um... Absent and affected political parties, it's up to us, the people, to organize amongst ourselves. <laughs> narrator. Look at that optimism. On a Monday? Narrator. Narrator. To have optimism on a Monday in America? Look at you, man. You're fucking ballsy. Rev, he looks like a quarter of my graduating class. Um, fucking. So... It's just fucking, you know, it, Popo's Bizarre Adventures is just the, that bizarre, right? Ex-deputy uh, fucking is accused of, of posing as a wedding guest in Arizona to steal gifts. So a retired sheriff's deputy uh, posed as a guest at two Phoenix area weddings to steal boxes of cards containing thousands of dollars. He went after the cash cards, basically like all the, 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 the congratulations on your marriage. Here's $200 or whatever. Um, is 54 Landon Earl Rankin, age 54 arrested Wednesday, um, in the thefts at private venues in April held without bond. Um, he would just walk up stealing stealing the box of wedding cards. Each contained between three and six thousand dollars for the two weddings. <laughs> he just needed some cash, so you know he um, probably has a bit of a drug habit. Um, ex cop in need for cash. Oh, no, it, there it is. He was booked on several drug uh, procession and drug paraphernalia offenses. Uh, he had amphetamine and fentanyl on him. Yeah. Yep. Typical ex-cop with a drug problem that he picked up while he was on the force from stealing drugs and using them from, um, uh, from the people he rousted. Oh, Jesus, Cyber, I don't doubt it. 
my graduating class was me, Hannah, Haley, Randy, Nikki, Patrick, Jacob, Sean, Jimmy, Billy, Joe, Nick, Emily, and Rachel. Jesus, my graduating class was 1,400 people. Um, <laughs> cops sure do love their fence. I know, right? Never give up hope. The only black tool I'll pick is the anarchy belt. <laughs> Fuck it. Narrator, you do that. F- you, you, you do that. 600-ish for me, says Akka. The fuck? Mine was 14. Jesus. Cassidy, when I graduated, it was 62. Fuck me. Oh, yeah. Um, God, that Uvalde stuff is just... Jesus, fuck me. Uh, also, the, the fucking cops threatened the... Uh, what was it? The... Um, press with charges if they reported on it. So 1200 for Aspen. Yeah. Forty eight says Zippy. Um so Federal Appeals Court. <clears throat> Federal appeals court has ruled that a Louisiana prosecutor and police officer who blatantly fabricated evidence are not immune from civil rights lawsuits by a former death row prisoner. They knowingly and deliberately fabricated the testimony, according to the Fifth Circuit, and as such, they are liable. Of course, it's uh, civil rights lawsuits. <laughs> I'd, I would, Jesus, I'd love to see some of these fucking fuckers punished with some like hard jail time, frankly. Um, but yeah, Foster, uh, Perlu, uh, Perlu, and uh, Perlu, and uh, F- Foster, uh, Michael Weary. Um, he had his uh, conviction overturned by the U.S. Supreme Court in 2016 because the prosecutors uh, withheld exculpatory evidence and um, they manufactured testimony and coerced a juvenile um, to falsely implicate, implicate Weary. So they basically just created a false narrative and then b- manufactured uh, evidence to back up their false narrative. Um, they... <laughs> they uh, they're going to be at least liable for the uh, civil rights lawsuits. That's, I mean, that's something. That's something. Um, yeah, they pulled a 14-year-old boy out of school on six occasions, at least, that we know of, to intimidate him into offering fest- a false testimony at a murder trial. False testimony that was concocted, quote, wholesale by that detective and prosecutor and carefully rehearsed the child's compliance ensured with scare tactics like taking him to view the murder victim's bloody car. Oh. So they revoked their uh, this dude's prosecutorial immuni- uh, immunity, which is not an easy deal to do. Um, and then... Again, Louisiana heavy. Fucking Louisiana. Um, three Louisiana state troopers are being charged for beating a fucking black motorist. Um, he also they also picked him up by his braids. I'm not kidding you. They they like quote unquote hoisted him to his feet by his braids. Um, yeah. Also, they bragged about it. They bragged about it in text messages to each other, saying they gave him a whooping that would give him nightmares. Uh, for a long time. Um, yeah. Fucking, uh, what are their names? Let's name check these pieces of shit. Jacob Brown, Dakota DeMoss, and George Cam Harper. All three of them um, absolutely kicked the shit out of a black dude. Just a black motorist. Of course, you know, did trumped up traffic stop. They roused some dude for a traffic stop. And the next thing you know, they they escalate the situation. They start yelling, get your hands up, get out of the car. What are you doing? He had a threatening attitude. His fucking, you know, he blah, blah, blah. blah. His, his, he had an aggressive stance. There's another one that I, I know they love to go to. Um, and yeah, next thing you know, they're whooping the shit out of this black dude. And then bragging about it amongst each other and fucking texting back and forth and shit. I mean, you know, video cam footage. 
Yeah, the aggressive stance thing is, uh, <clears throat> it's a thing. So I'm going to just read one. Um, and then one I'm going to link and just talk about briefly. Um, like Larry Craig aggressive. Yeah. Um, so Seattle police have stopped investigating sex adult sexual assaults this year. If you live in Seattle, they're not investigating adult sexual assault. Like they've stopped internal memo. They've stopped. Um, their sexual assault and child abuse unit staff are so depleted. They've, uh, de they've, def they've basically shut them down. Um, quote, the community expects our agency to respond to reports of sexual violence and at current staffing levels, that objective is unattainable. Um, so basically they lost a bunch of staff due to George Floyd protests. They lost a bunch of staff due to deaths from COVID um, and then they also were neglecting this unit uh, unit because they prioritized broken window policing over uh, actually doing something. So a good portion of their actual resources and funds are put towards things like level four plates for their SWAT team. Whereas the actual investigators who, you know, try and track down the people who raped, you know, 14 women last week. Those guys, they don't really exist as a unit. They don't get any funding. So, yeah. Um, they have, they are at present unable to assign adult sexual assault cases that come into the unit. So, you know, that. Oh, Cyberheart, broken, uh, you need to look into broken window policing if you're not aware of what that is. Tree pigs are arguably the worst pigs. Uh, sure, sure, sure. Cops are always under something, but always over the law. Yep. Um, so basically, don't bother contacting the police for sexual assault. Seek out alternatives, says Gord. Yep. Uh, Rev, um, that reminds me, I met some hippie types around my age earlier today. Saw them at a liquor store and passed them on a back road. Told them where to go digging. Warned them about the local laws and tree pigs. And I gave them a number to my uh, buddy who does quartz digging tours. Nice. Yeah, or outsource. I mean, you know. Okay, so I'm just going to read this to you because this is fucking insane. And we're going to wrap up here. This is, I like I said, you know, most of the, the last couple of weeks has been um, just straight up Ovalde. So Utah, Utah County. Um, this is batshit insane. Just going to read this article. So um, by uh, Barbie Latza Nadal. <laughs> it's a fucking correspondent at large for the Daily Beast. Either way. <clears throat> a wild QAnon conspiracy theory. No, Aspen, San Jose managed to keep their dicks in their fucking pants uh, for a week. No, that's, that's, it's the, that's the big story, really, is that San Jose managed to not masturbate at a crime scene for a week or die of a fentanyl overdose that they stole from a, a scene or fucking just drunkenly drive down the freeway bumper carring the whole way. No, yeah, San Jose managed to keep their nose clean for a, a week. Anyway, you're going to fucking, this is crazy. A wild QAnon conspiracy theory, theory that has followers convinced progressives rape and eat kids has bubbled into a small county in Utah. Utah County Attorney Dave, uh, David Levitt, who's running for re-election, is calling for the immediate removal of the county sheriff, Mike Smith, over a bizarre report implicating Levitt in a ritualistic sex ring known for cannibalizing young children. The 151-page report, which was released by the sheriff Wednesday among law enforcement, has not been made public. God, I wish it would. Is said to name Levitt and his wife in, in, as integral figures in a trumped-up conspiracy. 
The report claims that the abuse took between uh, took place between 1990 and 2010 and was carried out in three Utah counties. In announcing the investigation into, quote, ritualistic child sexual abuse and child sex trafficking, end quote, on Tuesday, the sheriff called on any potential victims who may have survived to come forward, but he said he did not directly name Levitt. He said he has no plans to resign and refuse to apologize for using his budget to fund the highly questionable investigation into a political foe. Instead, he blamed the county attorney for abuse of power. Quote, I believe that Levitt is using his authority and his pulpit to bully, distract, and mischaracterize the facts of an ongoing investigation, Smith told reporters Wednesday. When asked about Levitt's alleged involvement, he said, we don't talk about who's under investigation. Smith told reporters no one was personally named in the report, but Levitt said, in fact, he and his wife were named on purpose just a week before ballots were being sent out. Quote, I am calling upon Sheriff Mike Smith to open his office to an outside investigation where outside independent investigators are able to investigate and confirm or deny the documents from a debunked investigation from more than a decade ago were or were not used for political purposes in a Utah County attorney's race, Levitt said in a statement. The allegation that I am asserting is that the sheriff's office is using its position for political gain and and accusing them of abusing and cannibalizing and murdering children. And no, I will not step aside. The two officials have never met uh, have never met eye to eye since Smith endorsed a more like-minded conservative in the county attorney race. He maintains the timing of the report has nothing to do with the revenge. Quote, this is not political. This is something we take very, very seriously. This is some of the most egregious crimes that happen in our community where our children are victimized at this level. Smith also played down the mention of cannibalism in his investigation, which Levitt insists is a part of the report. The sheriff says the main focus is sexual abuse, not the consumption of children. So, I... Conservatives, are y'all okay? Do you guys need, like, a hug? Like, what's what's up with the fucking conservatives? All right. Let's turn that back on. So, Popo's Bizarre Adventures, everyone. <laughs> on on that note of child cannibalism <laughs> <laughs> <laughs>